So we've now, for the last two and a half years, been engaged in this ongoing nationally representative study of college graduates. I always brag that it's the largest that's ever been done. Um, and that's actually easy to say because embarrassingly, it's the only representative study of college graduates looking at their long-term outcomes that's ever been done. You just think about that, right? Like, I mean, I work at Gallup, so you know, I was like, geez, maybe we should go do one of these things. But the, the fact that no one has really set out in earnest to do something like that before, like shame on all of us. I mean, it's unbelievable, especially in this environment where everybody's talking about the return on investment for college. We're actually having a conversation in our country about questioning the value of a college degree. One of the things we measured is their well-being, right? Or maybe uh, simply paraphrase, what does a great life look like? In our uh, 70 years of research that's been building on this, this is now US and global research, we've identified five really crucial elements to somebody's well-being. And they're described as they are here, right? I'm not gonna go into great depth on them, but let me just give you one example. Um, community. Uh, a lot of colleges and universities pro profess things like community or civic engagement. Here's a really important distinction. Here, I'll give you the gold standard question for how we measure community well-being. See, see if any of you can strongly agree to this. I was recognized for contributions made to my community in the last 12 months. That's a really strongly worded question. I'm sure there's a handful in the room that say strongly agree. But here's my point about this. You don't get to that place without being deeply, meaningfully, lastingly engaged in some one thing. So what are we encouraging a lot of students to do? We actually have an expression for it, padding the resume, right? We encourage them to get involved in all kinds of extracurricular activities, right? Like listing like 15 to 17 extracurricular activities on the resume. This is the average I see in applications, right? And every time I see that, I, I wonder if it came at the cost of being deeply, meaningfully engaged in any one of them. But you see the difference, right? I don't want to, to discourage students from exploring and trying different things, but I also want to do more encouragement of finding something that they sink their teeth into and actually stick with over a prolonged period of time. So when we measure well-being, this is not just a nice to have. People who are thriving in all five elements of well-being have one-third the healthcare cost burden to their employer or organization compared to people who aren't thriving in any. And that's a high bar to be thriving in all five. You don't have to get people thriving in all five. For every element that you can move employees from zero to one or one to two, the healthcare cost burden just keeps going down. This is important because our healthcare tab in the United States today right now is $2.9 trillion. That's almost a trillion dollars more than the entire GDP of Russia, to put it in perspective. People could make a good argument that we're going bankrupt as a country because of our health care tab. So I ask you, do you think well-being is a nice to have or a need to have? Likewise, when we measure things like employee engagement, whether you're engaged in your work, there's a series of questions that measure this, right? They start with very basic things like, I know what's expected of me at work. <laughs> and as I mentioned to you before, there's a lot of people that actually don't really know what's expected of them. It gets into things like whether you feel your opinions count, whether someone encourages your development. Guess what word shows up in here? care, someone at work cares about me as a person. So these are the ways we measure engagement. They sound like nice things, but of course, the reason why it's important, the reason why corporate CEOs hire us to measure engagement is probably not because they care about engagement, it's because they, we've been able to show them that engaged employees are more productive, they're less likely to be absent, sick, they have lower turnover rates, they have uh, less theft from their organization, they have fewer safety incidents at work. If this is measured in for-profit companies, they generate more revenue and profit. So engagement matters to all the key performance indicators on the classic economic ledger.